Hello, my name is Dan and welcome to my allotment here in Essex in the southeast of the UK. So you can see here I had some runner beans, an assortment of varieties and today I'm going to making a video and I'm going to tell you how you can grow some lovely runner beans of your own. Runner beans like a nice warm temperature, so about 15 degrees C to around 25 degrees C, which is about 59 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, is good for runner beans. They don't like going much below about 10 degrees C, which is around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So they like plenty of sun all day if you can. So let's say you can only grow them in a place where there isn't full sun all day. You want to keep it a minimum of about six hours of full sun per day. Runner beans like a well-draining, fertile soil, so pH of around 6.5. If your soil is more on the acidic side, you could maybe consider adding something like lime. They don't like to be growing in soil that is too acidic. So the growing medium I'm growing these runner bean plants in here is some well-draining soil, some light soil, and on top of that, I have some, or it was at the time, six, seven month old horse manure mixed with wood chips. It's probably about nine months old now, something like that. Helps to add nutrients to the soil, building soil quality over time, microbes, etc. And it also helps the soil, the growing medium, to retain moisture. You don't want to allow your growing medium to dry out. You want to keep it slightly damp, not soggy and sodden, but just a little bit damp. Runner beans like plenty of water. And if you don't do this, you could end up losing some of your little baby runner beans, so to speak, or lose some flowers, it can be very detrimental to your crop. So keep them nicely hydrated. So this year, actually, watering really hasn't been a problem, at least <laughs> around here. Had quite a bit of rain, and rainwater, very beneficial, I think. But um, just keep checking your growing medium. In times of drought, maybe, not so much rain. Maybe water them three times a week, but give them a nice deep watering when you do that. So actually runner beans don't appreciate it if it gets too hot. I remember last year, or it may have been the year before, when I grew runner beans, we had quite a spell of some very warm and dry weather by UK standards. And the plants just really didn't grow that much during that time. The flowers didn't really appear, or at least not as many, and the plants sort of basically just sat there. But then, towards the autumn, late summer into the autumn, when it cooled down a bit and we had some rain, the plants really sprung into growth and the crop was later. Whereas this year, where we've had some cooler temperatures, which the runner beans really have appreciated, got some really beautiful beans on the plant right now. So regarding picking size, that's about a foot there, I would say, about 30 centimeters. I think that's a good size. You don't want to let them get too big because they can get stringy and tough, but like this, should be really nice. So when they're tender like this, I quite often like to eat them raw. Sometimes you can end up with so many runner beans that uh, you have to freeze them. So before you freeze them, or before I freeze them, what I do is just cut them into maybe an inch, inch and a half, two centimeters little chunks, if you will, then I blanch them and then freeze them. And it can be really nice, you know, in the middle of the winter when you are getting your own homegrown runner beans out the, out the freezer. So regarding fruit set, veg set, however you wanna put it. Now, runner beans are self-fertile. So that means they've got enough in each flower to produce a crop from their own pollen. But they do need bees, insects, pollinating insects to help with that, to release the pollen, move it around the flower thus producing some fruit. Now, out here in allotment, hopefully that's not too much of a, prob a problem or in your garden. But let's say you are growing runner beans on a balcony in a 60 storey flat or an apartment. There may not be bees up there. So what you could maybe do is get something like an electric toothbrush or whatever, just gently tap the flowers like that to help move that pollen about a little bit and uh, that could help you. So yes that's a scenario I gave you. I actually gave a friend of mine a few years ago or quite, a, quite some time ago now some runner bean plants and he grew them on an apartment flat balcony and uh, 
he said he got one beam from all, <laughs> all the plants I gave him. So, you know, maybe an electric toothbrush or something like that, or just shake the flowers like that, just to help a little bit with a bit of pollination if the pollinating insects aren't getting to them. So regarding pests on runner beans, the one I've mostly encountered is aphids, black fly, etc. So the way I remove those is I squirt them off using a hose lock water jet. I'll link a video down below. You can have a look at that if you want. Some people use a hose pipe. There's no hose pipes down here at the allotment, but maybe you've got one in the garden you could use, either connected to the mains or to a water butt, etc. But um, when you do that, you've got to be careful you don't damage the flowers or the little fruits because you could knock them off. With regards to birds, I can't say I've ever had a problem with birds attacking my runner bean plants, crop, etc. Slugs and snails, I, once again, I can't say that I've had a big issue with that, but maybe you might see your odd crop, your odd bean that's got maybe a slug trail up it or something like that. You could maybe look to just remove them manually and discard of them accordingly, or maybe at the bottom you could put something like sharp sand or horticult horticultural grit, or maybe just something that um, sawdust something that stops them moving about so they can't get onto the plant because they don't like moving over things like that. They find it uncomfortable. So you could look into certain measures like that. We'll discuss a bit about planting dates. So these Scarlet Emperor, I initially planted in cell trays in my polytunnel on the 28th of March, and I planted them out here on the 7th of May. So actually, that's quite early for planting runner beans. A good time to plant runner bean seeds is around early to mid-May. Now, I don't really like to straight sow direct into the ground, into the growing medium. I much rather bring them on in cell trays in my polytunnel. So with regards to my early sown runner beans, there was actually a week in April where which they endured an entire week of frosts, more or less. We had the coldest spring, I think, in 50 years here in the UK, and they would stood it very well. Yes, granted, they were in a polytunnel, but it still gets very, very cold in there indeed. Quite often, people will germinate runner beans inside on a windowsill, something which I've done myself, and then they run away, they get tall, leggy and weak, etc. and then people put them out and then as soon as they, they get subjected to some cold weather, that's the end of them. But um, I think if they're raised the way I raised them, they're a lot tougher than we may give them credit for. But as a general recommendation, early to mid-May, maybe even if you're in a rather cool location, say quite far north or indeed a country cooler than the UK, you could even wait until early June. A bit of story time for you now. Back in the day when I was a care assistant, I remember I was looking after a lady and we got onto the subject of straight sowing, direct sowing runner beans into the ground. And I remember she said to me, one for the birds, one for the garden, and one for you. So uh, one may wish to uh, take that into consideration. So runner beans can actually get about 20 feet tall if you let them go. That's about six meters, but I've got mine growing up about seven, eight foot, probably about seven or eight feet tall on these canes here. The canes are in the ground, they're bamboo canes, about that much, give them a nice bit of stability. So very happy with the, the height these are. And of course, I can actually pick, you know, the ones that are right at the top like this, whereas if you let them grow really high, of course, it can be an issue. I have seen them growing very high, but then of course, you've got the safety concerns and the practicalities of picking them. So what you want to do is nip the tops out when they get to the height you want them to be. That way it should encourage the plant to start setting flowers and then hopefully a crop further down. So when your plant gets to the desired height, so say the height of the cane here, cut it off and then that should hopefully help the plant to set a bigger crop lower down and help it to encourage bringing on the crop that it's already set. So mine are being grown up a very simple wigwam, and you can see how it works. Got some string, we've got two there, fastened there with a support through the middle, several supports, and then they are tied on. And they are probably around two feet 
spaced out. So one here going at an angle, another one going at an angle. And if I just put the camera up there, you can see how it all comes together by the time it gets to the top. Support through there, tied with some string. I've got about two plants per cane and the canes you can see with regards to spacing there to there, that is about eight inches, so about 14 centimeters, something like that. You don't want to put too many up each cane because of course each plant needs water and nutrients. So of course one doesn't have to build a wigwam. One can put bamboo canes straight in like this and much simpler design. I've got one per cane and you can see it's carrying a really beautiful crop here. Now these went in I think a little bit later than the other ones but maybe if you've only got room for a small amount, you know, small growing space for the beans, you could try something like this. Maybe if you're growing in a container you could consider something along these lines. So when you're growing in a container what you want to do is make really keep an eye on the watering because of course the plant will need the water and containers can dry out very quick particularly in hot weather so keep an eye on that so maybe if you're going to be growing runner beans in a container you could look to using something like a 30 litre container and have beans growing up canes maybe four canes one per cane or maybe two canes and two beans per cane something like that but uh, you can grow runner beans in containers but well draining growing medium keep an eye on the watering pollination of course as I mentioned earlier if you're growing them in a place where the bees can't get to them and you could even look into bush varieties of runner beans which there are now a variety called Hestia which I've actually got a few plants of that in my polytunnel which I might be planting out soon so look into those if you want to try something different or maybe you've got a small garden small growing space and you want to just have a go at growing some runner beans so if uh, you want to grow some runner beans in a pot you could maybe consider something like this these are growing up a pergola or pergola depending on how you wish to say it but have a look at that so they look really really good and really healthy indeed and they're coming into cropping now we can see we've got some nice beans on there so one really needs to make sure that they keep them well watered when they are in a container so this is actually quite dry so going to be giving these some water and of course you can pinch the tops out as you would normally when growing pole runner beans so yeah this is one way of growing runner beans in a small space while still getting a nice crop this is probably about a 30 litre container of course you can see it's not fully full if it was fully full that'd be better but this is just how uh, this one is even so still carrying a nice crop there so there is a way of growing runner beans where you dig a trench you put some newspaper in there put some well rotted manure in there then you have your soil on top and then you plant into that but uh, I've done it this way it's been very effective so with regards to feeding the approach I try to take is to have good soil good growing medium and work on that feed that and then hopefully your plants will have enough nutrition to last throughout the season without any feed having to be applied. I haven't fed these at all and uh, you can see just how well they have indeed done. So quite a history attached to runner beans. You may wish to look into that. They're very nutritious, full of vitamins A, C and K and they are also high in fiber. So very nutritious indeed, all sorts of varieties. Streamline is a good one. Scarlet Emperor as you've seen here. White Ladies, a nice one with nice white flowers. So take your pick and have a look around really. Anyway, if you like my work, please feel free to like it if you wish. You can share it with anyone you think may be interested. And if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up, please feel free to subscribe. See you next time. So today's crops, we have some spinach, Market More 76 cucumber. I have a Black Beauty courgette, a Cusa courgette variety Trista white. I have Necker Gold climbing French beans, Cherokee Trail of Tears, climbing French beans and also the runner beans.